myth. Jews stole Palestinian cities, land, and houses. Here are the facts. There was no Arab state or nation called Palestine in the Middle East in 1948 or ever. Let's look at some of history. The Ottoman Turks ruled the entire area from 1517 to 1917. During that time, there were no nations or independent states within the empire, just provinces. The locations of the future states of Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq and others were created by the European powers at the end of the First World War out of the ruins of the Turkish Empire. A homeland for Israel was one of the first created by the League of Nations. The fact is the Jews have lived continuously in Palestine for 3,700 years. Since the 19th century, the Jews were a majority of the population in Jerusalem. Therefore, since Israel's claim is older than any other, and its people have inhabited the land longer than any others, Israel has as much right to exist in the Middle East as do any of these Arab states. At the San Remo Conference in 1922, the League of Nations gave Britain the mandate to create a home for the Jews, a substantial portion of the land encompassing modern Jordan and Israel at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea was designated as the Palestine Mandate. It was to be a final secure homeland for the Jewish people. But the Arabs benefited most from the mandate, it turns out. In 1922, as British colonial secretary, Winston Churchill gave Transjordan to the Hashemites. Jewish leader Chaim Weizmann agreed to give 80% of the Jews' Palestine mandate land to the Hashemites. This was in exchange where the Jews received a written agreement that Transjordan would be made a home for those displaced Arabs that lived in Palestine mandate territory. The agreement was signed by Emir Faisal, representing the Arab kingdom of the Hejaz, or the holy sites around the great territory of Mecca and Medina. In this document, Emir Faisal promised there would be no more demands upon the Jews by the Arabs if they were given this land. Today, the kingdom of Jordan, which is at least 83% Palestinian, is supposed to be the Palestinian state, but it is not acceptable. The Hashemites took over the Transjordan and rule it. Why? Because there was never a national entity of people known as Palestinians. In response to continuous Arab threats and terror, in 1947, the United Nations divided the remaining 20% of the original mandate into what is called today the Gaza Strip and the West Bank for the Muslims. It allowed the Jews to keep an indefensible sliver of land as their home. For the first time in 2,000 years, Jews had a state of their own. Though it represented only one-sixth of one percent of the Middle East, that was unacceptable to the Muslims. On May 15, 1948, the day after Israel declared statehood, five surrounding Arab nations simultaneously attacked the infant nation. The attacking Arab governments urged the Arabs in the new nation of Israel to flee their homes. They promised to butcher the Jews in a few weeks then the refugees could return to their homes and claim the booty that was left. But the surrounding governments failed to make good on their promise. Against all odds, the Jews held them off. Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, wrote, the Arab armies entered Palestine to protect the Palestinians from the Zionist tyranny. But instead, they abandoned them, forced them to immigrate and to leave their homeland imposed upon them political and ideological blockade and threw them into prison similar to the ghettos in which the Jews used to live in Eastern Europe. When Israel became a state in 1948, 850,000 Jews were forced to flee Muslim countries with only the clothes on their backs. 
Many of these Jews were from communities that had existed for thousands of years. But you never hear about the Jews' refugee problem because the Israelis resettled them in Israel. In contrast, the Muslims put their displaced fellow Arabs into concentration camps and to this day have never accepted them, assimilated them, or offered them citizenship. Yet Israel extended full citizenship to the Arabs who stayed, and the Jews are not welcome in most Muslim countries today. From 1948 to 1967, Egypt possessed Gaza, and Jordan possessed the West Bank. Why did they not offer that land to their fellow Arabs and Palestinians as a state? It's the same land they now want Israel to give them. Perhaps the Egyptians and the Jordanians know something we don't. The Middle East crisis is really about the annihilation of Israel and the Jews. According to the Muslim propaganda machine, the cause of the Middle East conflict is the Israeli occupation of Arab land. This, too, is false. In 2000, Israel withdrew in force from the southern Lebanon which they had occupied to stop terrorist rocket attacks on Israeli towns in the north. Hezbollah immediately began launching missiles supplied by Iran against Israeli civilians in the northern Israel. In 2005, Israel withdrew its military forces from Gaza, which they had occupied to prevent terrorist attacks. As soon as Israel withdrew and forcibly removed the Jewish settlements, Hamas began launching rockets against towns and schools inside southern Israel. But these terrorists were not a rogue element. They are members of Hamas. And the vast majority of Palestinians voted for Hamas in the last general election and gave them control of the Palestinian government. If the Palestinians have immediately and relentlessly attacked Israel both from Lebanon and Gaza, when the Israelis gave them that land to them. Why do we think they will not do the same when Israel gives them the West Bank and the Golan Heights? The Muslims openly declare their goal. Why do we not listen and believe them? At the World Without Zionism conference in 2005, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad declared, as the Imam said, Israel must be wiped off the map. The Islamic community will not allow its historic enemy to live in the heartland. Anyone who signs a treaty which recognizes the entity of Israel means that he has signed the surrender of the Muslim world. At a later public conference, he said, like it or not, the Zionist regime is headed toward annihilation. The Zionist regime is a rotten, dried tree that will be eliminated by one storm. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah is even more blunt. At various times, he has said, the Jews are a cancer which is liable to spread again at any moment. There's no solution to the conflict except with the disappearance of Israel. If they all gather in Israel, it will save us the trouble of going after them worldwide.